Hi, my name is Elizabeth Joyce, and I'm from Rockingham County Schools, and I'm here with Cheryl Yates, who's also from Rockingham County Schools, and we teach in Eden, North Carolina at Moorhead High School, and I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about book clubs in Canvas. We started a district-wide book club in our county that has teachers and students involved in reading, and it's purely for fun in a safe and fun environment in the Canvas platform. And I wanted to start off with showing you our welcome page that kind of just gives people an understanding of what the book club is and why we started it. And we mainly just wanted to have a club where kids could come and talk about books, teachers could talk about books, get ideas, English teachers could have ideas for their classroom. And our logo here is Rockstar, and he is going to talk to you a little bit about joining the club, and we used a tool called Blabberize. I'm not going to show that for time's sake, but this just kind of walks you through an overview of our book club. We are even on our district homepage, so parents can see that there's a book club in our county. We also have a site called Your Next Read for teachers and students to actually type in books or authors or genres to get ideas of what else to read that they might like. We also have suggestions where teachers and students can put down the kind of books they would like to read for the club because we're all about trying to read different books, um, you know, meet some different varieties. We also made the news in our local paper. There's a little article you can click and see about that. And then I embedded a survey using Google Forms so we could actually find out what books students and teachers would like to read for this coming school year. The next module is for our January-February uh, book. This was our first one, The Adoration of Jenna Fox. And we have postings here from teachers, Mr. Cullen, myself, Ms. Yates, another faculty member, media specialists, students from all over the county. And as you can see, the thread uh, gets a little bit longer. And what's nice about it is people can post at their own time from home, from school, from their phone. And we just wanted to kind of find out you know, questions to ask them before they were to read the book. So each module, I'm going to go back to the home page, and you can see each module for the book, there is a before you read, and then there is a what do you think as you're reading, and then there is an after you have read a posting. So this is our book club, and we read several books for that year. And then besides um, a book club for students and teachers, I did a book club for professional reading. Okay, so a lot of people might be wondering, well, she's the photography teacher, so why are they reading a book that has nothing to do with photography? There's no relationship to the content there, is there? Uh, and no, there isn't. <laughs> I simply did it because... Number one, I don't have an EOC, so I don't have those time constraints that pacing guides um, have other teachers locked into. So I decided that I really, really wanted to develop an interest in my students for reading. So I would take the first 10 or 15 minutes of every class, and I would just simply read to them. So Elizabeth picked out a book for us called Maze Runner, which is just a very exciting trilogy. And we just read for the first 10 or 15 minutes. And at the first week, they were like, yeah, it's cool. It gets us out of 10 minutes worth of work. But then they really got into the story. And after about a week or so, they didn't want me to stop. And they wanted it to keep going. So when we got to a particularly um, exciting part, a cliffhanger, I decided to stop and take a break from reading and let them finish what they thought the next chapter should sound like. So this is an example. Using Google Docs, they paired up into groups and they were supposed to write the next chapter of the book according to how they would want it to go. And they had to use the same dialogue that the author wrote with and keep, uh, you know, try to stay within keeping of how the sound of the story went from the author's point of view, but simply change what they wanted to happen. So then we decided, well, you know, let's take it one step further since photography is visual. Let's try to do something visual with it. And so we used a comic book maker that um, is called Pixton. And so the students then had to take their chapter that they wrote and they had to create a comic out of it. Now, I could have done this without Canvas, but the beauty of it is every bit of this embedded, uploaded, worked right from Canvas um, 
and they were also able to put this in their e-portfolios that they created. So this is just an example of um, the comic that they created to go along with their story. The funny thing is that after they finished, a couple of them were disappointed with how the book went because they were so invested with what they had written and they really liked their version. But we also, just to get a little bit of collaboration going a little bit farther, some critiquing, some peer critiquing, we had them put links on Canvas to each of their Google Docs. And so every group had to read everybody else's writing, and then they had to critique and comment, and they did the same thing with the comics. And so everybody got to read what everybody else wrote, and knowing that ahead of time really, I think, was more incentive to them to, to do a you know, really strong job with their writing and with their comic, because they knew their peers were going to be looking at it. And there was a little bit of competitiveness there between them on who was going to have the most exciting comic and the most exciting story. Uh, some of you might have come yesterday and had seen us talk about Not On My Watch, the human rights project we did. So another way to involve reading is to talk about book trailers and to get books you know, kind of introduced to kids almost like in a movie format. So I had taught some of my kids last year in my classroom about book trailers, and I say, you know how when you go to the movies and you see those you know, trailers and you really, they grab your attention, you're like, wow, I want to see that movie? I need you guys to do that for books. So this is an example of one that a student made on Warriors Don't Cry. It is a memoir. It's about the Little Rock Nine in 1957. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show you that is because that was completely student made. That was her summer reading book and then she used this as a project to entice her classmates about to, re to read the book as well. And I played it in Canvas's you know, media content player so you could actually see it's as easy as getting the embed code and just putting it in Canvas to show other students. And so when we were doing the Human Rights Project, we read this book for the national level of it all so that way the kids could actually see the bullying at local the national with civil rights, human rights, and then also global with the um, human rights project with the world. Um, so that was her project. And then because we introduced that to the students, then we had them start to read the book and have discussions. And discussions are a great way to have students engaged in literature. And I'm going to let Ms. Yates talk about this because they had several posts they had to respond to. Okay, first, I, I want you to imagine these kids have signed up for photography and they think they're going to walk around all over Canvas with point-and-shoot cameras, taking pictures of their friends, and Ms. Yates is like, oh, no, no, you're going to read a book about integration, some U.S. history. Um, that was a hard sell. I mean, they were like, oh, why do we have to do that? When they saw Elizabeth's student's book trailer, which is what we showed them first, I don't know about you guys, but I, I got chill bumps at the end. When they saw that, it was like, hey, yeah, that looks cool. Okay, we'll read it. And then when they got into it, of course, you know, that video was the hook, and I embedded that right in the module 
for the assignment. So they went right to Canvas and looked at it. They looked at it several, some of them said, you know what, I watched that several times, Ms. Yates. It just was very moving. All right, we started posting, and again, as the um, photography teacher, we had not done a whole lot of writing. And so we started and pull up um, landings. As a matter of fact, I usually, in an elective class, my thing is, you know, I'm not the English teacher. I'm not going to punish them with a grade because they don't write well. That wasn't my job. My job is to look at the content of what they're saying, and that is so wrong. And I know a couple of you in here are on the community college level, and I know we're sending you kids who graduate who are not where they should be with their reading and writing. So Elizabeth, with a little bit of push from Elizabeth, I have kind of tried to step my game up in responding to their post. Um, so up here at the top, and, and it doesn't matter what it says, the point I want to show you, this is the same student, student A. This was a student who had been accepted to college. He was a senior. He was an honor student and he was just a couple months away from graduating, and his post, literally, the first one has no punctuation, nothing is capitalized, this is one long run-on sentence. And, you know, I probably would have taken some points off of, of it uh, for that, but I previously would have been more concerned with the comment, well, what is he trying to say? So Elizabeth is like, you're not going to grade that, are you? You're not taking that, are you? And I'm like, well, okay, I'm not now because you're the, <laughs> she's a former, a former English teacher. And then she was like, no, no. So this is a post from the same student just a couple weeks later. And this was another beautiful thing about Canvas. I don't know what gave me this idea, but after Elizabeth said, you're not going to take it, I think it just clicked. Well, then I'll just delete it. So whenever they would post stuff like this, I would go in and delete it. And when they came in the next day, they were like, 14 kids had all their posts deleted. And they were like, Miss Yates, I, I did my assignment. I don't know why it's not there. And I said, I know why it's not there. I deleted it because it was terrible. And I will continue, <laughs> I will continue to delete it until I like it. Forget a zero. I'm not even going to fail you. You're, you're, you're not, you're, you haven't even written anything good enough for a zero yet. I'm going to just keep <laughs> deleting. So finally, after just three weeks, that student was posting like this. And the only thing I do want to read is this last sentence. I think integration means putting two ethnicities together which should have never been separated to form a civilization where everybody is treated the same no matter what. I think that's a powerful sentence. Um, and that came from the student who three weeks earlier had posted with no capitalization, no punctuation. Um, the, they really got into this book and without knowing it, they were learning so much more um, and Another thing I want to point out is that the collaboration is what did it, because I wouldn't have done it by myself. And so I think Canvas is the perfect tool for that collaboration. Um, it's so easy to add another teacher to your course, which is what I did. So Elizabeth is looking at all my kids' work saying, no, 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 do this, help them this way. Um, and so without that collaboration, that easy collaboration, we didn't have to meet after class. We didn't have to pick a time to get together. We just communicated through the course. And I think you can see the students are the ones that benefited from that. One of the other courses um, I've been working on a little bit is our English departments across the district in my county are all reading a book by an author named Kelly Gallagher. He's an English teacher, high school in California. And so I took this, his most recent book because I'm real big on reading and writing and how they go hand in hand. And so I started thinking, okay, if we got the district-wide book club and we got kids and teachers involved, why are we not doing more professional development in Canvas 
with book studies. I mean, you could take any book. It could be technology, online learning, um, writing, reading, what have you, math. So I took his book, uh, Kelly Gallagher, Write Like This, and I basically just broke down the modules into a, a group study. So, you know, basically a professional book club for teachers. And in this way, we can get ideas from each other, and if possible, if your district allows it, you may be able to get, you know, CEUs. But I just thought that teachers need to kind of see what the students are going through, like really put them in Canvas as students and see what it's like to submit an assignment, see what it's like to actually do a discussion post, you know, maybe even get a little bit radical and do some video footage of themselves versus just everything being text. So these are just some examples of like assignments and so like a getting to know you kind of a thing. How do you teach or demonstrate writing in your classroom? Well, what do you hope to gain or to learn from this class? You know, how can we help each other kind of a thing? And then um, as Ms. Yates has pointed out, rubrics are huge. I mean, Canvas has been a lifesaver having rubrics because that way you can actually with the class as a whole or with another teacher develop one. And I want Ms. Yates to talk just a little bit, if you will, about when she had her students make a rubric together because I think that was really powerful because at first they were speechless when she was trying to get them to actually create one. Okay, so yeah, I've gotten really, really into this rubric thing with Canvas <laughs> because mainly it's so easy to grade and everything I grade in my class is pretty much subjective, artwork, writing, it's, and it's really hard sometimes to explain to a student, well, that painting is a 93 versus a 95. Why? Where are those two points, Ms. Yates? That's difficult to show. So I started using the rubrics, but some things are very su uh, subjective. And so actually, Elizabeth gave me the idea and said, why don't we get the kids involved? Because they are hard to make, especially when it is subjective material. What does an A collection of photo documentary look like? A high A, a mid A, a low A. So we got them involved and as she said, they were pretty speechless at first because nobody had ever empowered them to have a say about how they were gonna be assessed. So I just gave them a day or two and, and said, you know, write down, if you were the teacher, what do you think the best of an A would look like? and then something that's maybe a little better than a B, but not the best A, a low A. And so we did the rubric together. The great thing about it was I had absolutely nobody questioning me about their grade. And they had that rubric right there in their canvas shell. And as they were working, I would keep reminding them, now you are checking the rubric, right? Because if I could see they weren't where maybe they needed to be with an aspect of it, reminding them to go back to that rubric, I didn't even have to say anything. I didn't even have to point out what was wrong. The beauty was they could find it themselves. They could look at that rubric and do a self-assessment and say, okay, she wants this. Do I have that? No, I don't. Uh, and if they didn't, they could sometimes figure out what they didn't have, and maybe they didn't know where to go from there, but then that's when the dialogue came into play. They would come and they would say, okay, Ms. Yates, I looked at the rubric, and I, I'm not, I know I didn't do this, but I'm not real sure how to do it. And so then we would do the dialogue, and that's what we did with the writing, too. Elizabeth helped me um, make very small, simple rubrics for posting, because when they were replying to post, they would, these are seniors in high school, and they would say things like, oh, great answer, dude. I agree 100%. Oh, I like the way you said that. And I probably would have given credit because, yes, you did reply to two people. But with that rubric um, and the handy delete button that I so thank you for, um, <laughs> they sort of figured out, oh, okay, this is what a good post looks like. And the book club, with faculty participating with students, we could model for them, this is what a good post looks like, and this is what an appropriate response looks like. And I, do I have time to tell the story sure, about you? Please. At, please. <laughs> you know, a lot of this was new to me, working with, uh, collaborating with an English teacher who was also an ITS teacher. So it benefited me tremendously. Um, 
But she has me doing all these discussion questions and posting, and I'm so proud because we're writing in, you know, the the photography and the art class, and it's spring break, and hallelujah, I get to, we all get to go home for spring break. So it was also uh, end of a grading period. And so I wasn't going to grade over spring break. I will tell you that using Canvas is going to put some responsibility on the teachers. You will have to respond in a timely manner because you can't hide anymore. They, okay, they know if they're getting a response or not. And you can't respond to one or two and forget to grade the rest because the one or two that get their comments are going to be excited. And the rest of the kids are going to be like, hey, hey, what about me? So <laughs> Elizabeth was sitting on the beach spring break, and she had set her phone up to get notifications every time kids posted. So she was responding like crazy as they would post. Me? No. I did not have that notification <laughs> turned on. So two days before the grading period, I am frantically trying to read and make comments. And, you know, I'm, I wanted my comments to be valuable, so I'm, I'm writing lots of stuff. And the next day we came in, and one of my students, Tiffany, came up and said, hey, Ms. Yates, thank you for 17 emails yesterday because I had gotten so, so behind that she had gotten 17 notifications from me in one day. Um, so you do have to, you know, th there's a responsibility involved with this. You have to do your part too. You do have to respond in a timely manner. So whether it's a book club where you're reading books for fun, and you're reading a book maybe once a month, because we did meet face-to-face -face as well, and the good thing about the book club was kids who had sports after school or had, you know, clubs, commitments, church commitments, what have you, they could still be a part of the book club because of Canvas. And that never would have happened in the past when book clubs in the past tend to be just face-to-face. -face. So whether you do a book club or whether you do a professional study with a book um, in, a, in a course like with this Kelly Gallagher one that I'm promoting for, for my English teachers, or whether it's just reading as a class and, and sharing your love of books and doing book trailers or book talks, I hope you guys got something out of this, and I'm going to open it up for... Um, Hold on. Cheryl's got to talk some more. <laughs> I have one thing to say because I am in a unique position. I'm also a parent of a student who has a, is at this same school who was in the U.S. history class. So as a parent, he, he, I was thrilled to get to see his responses. I thought my son was pretty smart, but when I saw his responses in the Little Rock Nine from his U.S. history class that was in the joint project with me, it was a very proud moment to see my son's work and his interaction with the other students. Um, and as a parent, I can't wait for all his other teachers to be on board with this. <laughs> Any other questions before we wrap up? Yes. This, co this course is public, and I'm going to put the link up. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yes. When, that's a good question. When you have the post up, yes, it does, after a while, look very, very long. You can go and look up just that student and see that student's post. Absolutely. Maria and Laura are going to pass out a little uh, bookmark for you all. And we really want to thank you guys for coming. And uh, we hope you get to reading in the cloud. <laughs> thank you very much.